next we talk about uh, uh, saturation nonlinearity and we want to find the describing function for this saturation nonlinearity Satura saturation nonlinearity is described over here uh, this is the input axis and this is the output axis uh, as long as input to this uh, nonlinearity is less than this numerical value uh, here this is projected over here as long as input is smaller than this uh, numerical value then what will be the output of the nonlinearity same as the input and if the input exceeds this value what will be the output art will will just saturate it will not further uh, increase a more general situation is that uh, here what is slope of this line slope of this line is 1 it can be taken different so this slope can uh, be uh, can have some other value so it can have a slope of k so as long as input to this nonlinearity is smaller than a smaller than a what will be the output output will be simply proportional to the input and when the amplitude of the input exceeds uh, this value a then output will just saturate and we want to find describing function for this nonlinearity the approach is quite clear we shall apply a sinusoid signal uh, as an input to this nonlinearity and then we shall determine uh, the output of this nonlinearity and then we shall find the fundamental component to that uh, this w of t so if we apply a sinusoidal input to this nonlinearity what will be the output of this uh, nonlinearity so up to this point up to this point the amplitude of the input is less than uh, a so what will be the situation uh, up to this uh, time instant at uh, this time instant uh, the output of this nonlinearity will be simply proportional to the input and after after this value uh, this will be simply saturated that uh, is uh, this input sinusoid is again depicted over here this is basically not the input sinusoid what is it it is k multiplied by a sin omega t uh, if there were no saturation only uh, we had uh, this straight line with slope k then if we apply this sinusoid the output would have been this signal but now there is also saturation uh, this graph will saturate over here clear uh, so this green uh, curve is for w of t uh, when we apply this sinusoid sinusoidal input to this nonlinearity this value is the same as this value that is k a and what is this time instant this uh, let's call this uh, time instant uh, uh, omega t to be equal to gamma and uh, over here in this graph what is uh, this gamma how we show it the time instant uh, when the amplitude of this is equal to uh, this value a so that is this is gamma uh, and we can find gamma uh, what is uh, this uh, this value this is a sign of gamma a sign of gamma uh, at this time instant this is equal to a this small a capital a into sign of gamma that is equal to uh, small a and uh, we can find gamma from here gamma is equal to sign inverse of this small a over capital A by simply rearranging these terms and uh, we can now write uh, a mathematical expression for this uh, W of T uh, what is W of T as long as this Omega T is between 0 and gamma between 0 and gamma what is W of T W of T is simply some scaled version of the input K A sin omega t and when input exceeds this value then it is uh, saturated saturated at a value equal to ka 
this value k a for omega t between gamma and pi by 2. Odd nonlinearities we have a naught and a n equal to 0 and b1 is given by this expression and here we integrate it from minus pi to pi but what we observe is that w of t w of t has uh, this shape this uh, green curve and uh, sin omega t has a sh shape uh, uh, similar to this uh, dotted line uh, their product what will be their product from here to here the from here to here the product is the same as the product from here to here right and likewise from here to here the product of two functions is the same therefore instead of integrating it from minus pi to pi we can integrate it from 0 to pi and then multiply it by 2 that is uh, 2 divided by pi and this integral and furthermore uh, what you observe is that uh, from uh, here to here from this time to this time uh, if we split it into halves from uh, from uh, 0 to pi by 2 and then pi by 2 to pi uh, both the areas are the same therefore instead of integrating it from 0 to pi we can also integrate it from 0 to pi by 2 and then multiply it by 2 so that is clear so we have uh, integrated it from 0 to pi by 2 and then multiply it by uh, this expression by 2 so this integration is now easier uh, that is written over here 4 divided by pi and we can we again split this integration which is from 0 to pi by 2 into two parts 0 to gamma uh, where w of t is given by this expression and then from gamma to pi by 2 when w of t is equal to k a clear so this integration is uh, now uh, easier this becomes a uh, sine square uh, omega t and uh, how to integrate that sine square omega t uh, we can uh, write a uh, sine square omega t into this form by using a half angle identities uh, k a is written as it is over here and this sine square omega t is written into this format and uh, this is also written into the same format now you know the integrals of everything uh, what is integral of 1 it is omega t uh, cosine 2 omega t integral of that you know uh, so these things uh, you already know I do not need to repeat it so integral of uh, 1 is omega t integral of cosine 2 omega t is sine 2 omega t divided by 2 and we substitute the uh, lower and upper limits integral of sine omega t that is equal to cosine uh, minus cosine omega t and uh, we substitute the limits of integration uh, if you substitute the limits of integration uh, then you have this expression k a divided by 2 and this omega t is gamma uh, uh, because we are integrating it with respect to omega t so we substitute omega t equal to gamma over here then here is sine 2 gamma by 2 when we substitute the lower limit uh, omega t this things become 0 and sine of 0 is also 0 so lower limit is also substituted here if we substitute the upper limit uh, what do we get uh, we get 0 and when we substitute the lower limit uh, then we have cosine of gamma and this negative sign is cancelled out with uh, the negative sign uh, when we were substituting the lower limit so we have this expression uh, which can be further rearranged to write it into this format uh, b1 uh, the same b1 is written over here again uh, this this uh, this thing is rewritten over here uh, how did we proceed over here 
uh, actually this is the same uh, written two times so no matter so here we have uh, applied the identity sine of 2 gamma that is equal to 2 sine uh, gamma into cosine gamma that is written over here and uh, then uh, the same thing written over here uh, this uh, what is sine of gamma what is gamma what is gamma we have computed it in the last lecture that is uh, the last slide that is sine inverse of a over a small a over capital a so this sign and uh, that sign inverse those are cancelled out so we have this small a over capital a multiplied by cosine of gamma written as it is and rest of the terms are also written as it is a small a over a and this is a 2a over a their difference is simply uh, this small a over capital a and uh, then so this thing inside the square root is nothing but the same as cosine of gamma and uh, now what is gamma gamma is sine inverse of uh, small a over capital a so sine of sine inverse of that thing that is simply equal to uh, sine of sine inverse of this thing uh, whole square uh, this uh, uh, square should be uh, from here to here it is again a typo this square should be here so this sine and sine inverse are cancelled out and then we have uh, a square over capital A square. So this is B1 and ratio of B1 over A that is the describing function. Uh, so describing function for this saturation nonlinearity is given by this relation where gamma we have already computed an expression for gamma. So any question up to this point? Everything is clear. The procedure is simple. We apply a sinusoidal input to the nonlinearity, determine the output to the nonlinearity, and uh, once we have the output to the nonlinearity, then we can uh, find the fundamental component for that particular nonlinearity.